Hello everybody, a uh, very very good evening to all of you. Welcome to Study IQ IAS English. My name is Abhishek Singh and I welcome you all in this session. And guys, today in this session we are going to discuss about the second part of the Bronze Age urbanization in the Indus Valley which we call as the Harappan civilization, right? So in this lecture we are going to discuss about the various features of the Harappan civilization and these features are somewhat common across the different cities of this civilization. And if we talk about uh, the various features, so even, even our P2I batch has also got various features and why so? Because this batch is such a special batch where it provides in fact each and every required detail, required information or required guidance to crack the civil services 2024 and not just that. It is available in the, in the English, English and Hindi, all the three distinct media. Not just that, if we are talking about, like if we are talking about uh, the cost of this entire program, so this is available at rupees 29,999 rupees, given you are using this code ASR live. But let me tell you one very, very important thing. That is the last date of enrollment in this session. That is, that is just today itself. Today is the last day. So don't forget to enroll if you are willing to crack the 2024 examination. So good evening everybody. Good evening Sarvain. Good evening to all of you. Guys quickly share this session with your friends because this session was actually you know uh, somewhat due to technical reason it was uh, missing from the upcoming session. So that's why some of you might not have got the notification by now. But now everything is fine. So you can share this uh, session the link of this session to as many people as you can so that all your friends and all your colleagues or those who are preparing for this examination, they can watch this video. Now, let us understand about the today's topic. So, a summary of the major cities. So, dear students, as we all are aware that approximately 2800 Harappan sites were discovered related to the three different stages of the civilizational development. All right. Good evening, learner. Very good evening. So, here we can say that the first stage was there the first stage was there which is called as the farming stage or early farming culture okay early farming culture all right the second stage the second stage that is also known as the mature right the mature phase or the age of integration or the era of integration the era of integration all right and the third stage called as the late harappan stage late harappan stage also known as right also known as the cemetery h culture okay cemetery h culture all right so here if we are talking about if we are talking about the features of harappan civilization and timeline as well so here we can assign approximate timeline of 3300 BC up to 2600 BC. From 2600 BC up to 1900 BC and from 1900 BC up to 1300 BC. Okay. So this is something that we already know, we are already aware about. Now if we try to understand about the different sites and locations which might have some similar features. So, what are those features? But before that, we need to know about the major sites of Harappan civilization. So, dear students, as we all are aware that Harappan civilization was vastly located, vastly located in the entire northwestern parts of our subcontinent. This makes it, this simply makes it the largest Bronze Age civilization developed in that era and found in present time across the world. Neither the Mesopotamian civilization nor the Egyptian civilization had such an extensive area covered under the civilizational extent. All right. So, some of the most important sites, if we are talking about those important sites include 
the very very crucial harappa harappa is there kali bangar is there rakhi gadhi is there banwali is there all right apart from that we have uh, surkotada we have uh, dhola veera we have uh, lothal okay and here we have we have uh, kot di ji chan hudaro all right and we have this uh, mohan judaro and we also have the the sutka gendor sutka gendor right so these are some of the right some of the most enhanced and significant sites all right aman solanki ji uh, this channel is uh, exclusively in uh, english so i hope that you will uh, understand that we are actually we are actually delivering the lecture entirely in english only right however however these are very common things and i am using the very simple way of english so that you can understand each and every word okay right so here if we say it right if here if we see it we can say that apart from these crucial places these important places there are hundreds hundreds of the other places which we can not recall and obviously if we cannot recall all the places therefore we should be remembering or trying to remember at least few important places related to the harappan civilization all right everyone so apart from the places which i demarcated which i indicated on the map apart from those places also we have several other important places about the harappan right, civilization and important cities and the findings of the important cities the impo the significant points related to those important cities we will be doing that part in tomorrow's lecture but today we are going to understand about we are going to understand about the features of the mature phase of harappan civilization all right everybody so features of mature uh, phase of harappan civilization if you are talking about so the very first feature that is the harappan town planning the harappan town planning all right everybody town planning is i think something that uh, all of you might be might be, uh, might have heard about or might be aware about what does this image show you what does this image show you this indicates probably the presence of uh, an elevated platform an elevated platform this platform is uh, having somewhat like a boundary wall okay somewhat like a boundary wall is there boundary wall is there and after that we have got further elevations where the stairs are there to go upward and then continuous huge walls are constructed and it is continuously rising up and upwards up and upwards okay everybody so now we can conclude that probably their town was divided into the two different portions these two different portions were related to probably the rich section and the poor section of the society or probably the ruling classes okay and the ordinary citizens of the citizens of the civilization or the subjects of civilization so probably the upper town the upper town that was called as citadel as citadel what is the meaning of citadel citadel means a fort a type of fort right that is having a boundary okay and what is the meaning of uh, what is the other part the other part was called as the lower town the lower town was basically nothing nothing but uh, it was uh, not not built upon not built upon any platform so it was simply built upon a built upon the ground okay it was not built upon any platform so overall we can say that this was something this was something if we have the direction suppose this is north this is east this is west and this is south then after knowing the directions here after knowing the directions here can we make can we make uh, you can say can we make the diagram of uh, this entire civilization so it might be something like that it might be something like that 
here you can see the elevated that is the plinth the plinth on the plinth you might be having some houses or some structure okay so this is basically located in the western part of the city in the western part of the city and here in the eastern part we have the we have the normal lower town where the simple houses were constructed here some of the houses they were constructed you know which had double story buildings which had double story buildings okay everybody so apart from having the double story buildings okay double story buildings the citadel also had some administrative some administrative constructions as well administrative blocks right then ritual ritualistic ponds etc so we can probably say one thing what is the meaning of plinth plinth is basically an elevated platform like the railway platform is a little bit on the height from the ground so that structure is called as plinth okay that structure is called as plinth got it so here it is like it is like the administrative block or the ruling or the rulers colony or the rulers block of this city now in the lower town the houses were quite ordinary the houses were quite ordinary they were not usually they were not the double story houses there was a availability of simple markets simple roads you know these type of things and if we talk about the overall structure so here let me tell you that this structure was <coughs> right this structure was actually divided that structure was divided into the right, divided into into the square shape pattern okay into the grid pattern into the grid pattern if the town was constructed in the west to east west to east fashion where the western side had the higher buildings okay so the eastern sides had the lower buildings and the highway the highways were right highways were going from from north to south from north to south okay and here cutting across the highways there were the small lanes okay small lanes what is the meaning of lane lane basically means gali okay gali gali is also an english word as well as hindi word so there were small lanes here you could see the presence of the presence of houses okay the presence of houses and suppose if these houses are constructed here you will not see that the doors of the houses are opening on the on the streets okay these are the streets streets so doors were not opening on the street but the doors were opening on the other side on the backyard side got it so this is basically the construction pattern now this construction pattern was repeated it was repeated and this is why what happened this is why we got the appearance of right we got the appearance of what we got the appearance of a chess board appearance of a chess board okay so this is what we call as the grid pattern as the grid pattern this pattern of a settlement that was almost common in each and every as in each and every important city somewhat it was little bit different little bit different at kalibanga why so because all the constructions all the structures all the structures they were built of they were built of the burnt bricks okay the burnt bricks what is the meaning of the burnt bricks the burnt bricks which were baked in fire baked in fire okay the proper bricks regular bricks that we are using currently or today however at kalibanga okay at kalibanga at kalibanga we had the mud bricks the use of mud bricks was there all right everyone the use of mud bricks was dominant or observed at kalibanga apart from that 
Several other features were also present in the in the town planning aspect of Harappa. In fact, UPSC had asked a question in the mains examination that what could we learn as far as the town planning is concerned. In fact, there have been the several questions in different years where UPSC is interested to ask from the candidates that what exactly they can suggest after observing the splendid pattern of uh, Harappan town planning and looking at the current situation of a uh, haphazard or unplanned urban development in different cities of India. All right, everyone. So, this is where this is where we need to understand that uh, if we are talking about if we are talking about the other features okay other features so we can say one thing we can say one thing that not just uh, the houses were houses were double storied okay but they also had they also had the storehouses they also had the the storehouses they also had the courtyard okay the courtyards and they also had the separate bathroom okay the separate bathrooms present in their bathrooms present in their in their houses all right apart from the house structure if we talk about the you know common or uh, general structures to be used for to be used by the complete community so there were certain community okay certain community structures which included okay which included what which included the great bath okay the great bath was there apart from the great bath you can also include the great granaries okay the great granaries which were probably the largest structure okay the largest structure was there apart from the great bath great granaries and such structures like uh, the great assembly hall of mohan jodaro okay assembly hall of mohan jodaro right also there was a stupa like structure okay stupa like structure at mohan jodaro only so we can say we can say that this entire civilization not just at mohan jodaro but also we have found the granaries at harappa we have found the you know citadel like structures at rakhi gadi we have found the dockyard at lothal okay we have found the uh, you know entire city surrounded by the boundary wall at dholavira so we can say that this complete civilization this whole civilization was having the significant structural development and that is why it was very well called as the urban civilization all right everybody so apart from some other primary features you can also have a look on have a look on the excellent drainage system in the town with three stage functioning all right everybody the excellent drainage system in the town with three stage functioning what is the meaning of the three stage functioning you can probably see it that uh, suppose if there was a house constructed here so the primary streams are coming out of the house primary drains are coming out of the house these are the secondary drains okay secondary drains which are connected with the primary and there will be several several such secondary drains which will be connected with the large drainage a large drainage that will be the tertiary drainage okay the tertiary drainage if i am going to make a clear diagram for this drainage system as well then probably you can understand it very well for example <coughs> okay just a second guys let me just change this okay <coughs> all right i think it's not changed so here you can understand it very well that uh, if this is uh, the primary drainage this is the primary drainage here this is the secondary drainage again this is the secondary drainage and these are the primary drainages okay because here there are houses there are houses okay houses all right so we can say if they are houses 
and uh, they have the drainage one okay so this is d1 d1 okay d1 this is d2 d2 because this is the secondary drainage okay and this is d3 now this d1 d2 d3 sorry d2 okay d2 so here all the d2 all the d2 they are going to be merged with the d3 okay they are going to be merged with the d3 so this is the primary drainage this is the secondary drainage and the, this is the tertiary or the final drainage so overall we can say that harappan drainage system was exemplary it was you know it was simply magnanimous drainage system marvelous drainage system this drains also had the also had the cess pits okay the cess pits what is the meaning of the cess pit cess pit is basically if you might have seen that on the big streams there is the there is the entry entry hole for cleaning purpose for cleaning purpose okay so the entry holes meant for the cleaning purpose or the cleaning of drains okay that is what we call as that is what we call as the cess pit this is called as a cess pit okay so these were the features these were the features of the town planning in harappa got it everybody i hope that all of you are able to understand it now if you understood this thing properly now let us move to look at the like let us move to look at the individual wells you can see here the individual wells are present all right everybody individual wells are present apart from that you can also see the streams and secondary and tertiary streams are there then the primary streams in front of the houses secondary streams are there right and not just that this is the artificial intelligence based representation graphical representation here that is showing a right section of the house this is a section of the house this is a basically the one half of the house this is the ground floor in the all right on the ground floor you can see the kitchen is there you can see probably uh, you know the stone based the stone based crush is showing all right this is showing the well and the bathroom here and there is a presence of a roof as well so this is something something similar something similar like that the houses might be constructed okay everybody and this is showing a complete arrangement of the township where you can see that the main highway was going on the other side and here these people are sitting on the sitting on the roof okay sitting on the roof now talking about so i think we got a clearer understanding of uh, the town planning now let us understand about uh, the society okay so as far as the society is concerned the harappan society was primarily urban in nature comprising mostly of the middle classes mostly of the middle classes and not just that <clears throat> the differences the differences which we have found in the town planning the differences which we have found in the house construction etc so these differences automatically indicate that there were there were different social groups for example if you see my house it will be different from the house of obviously ambani's and adani's my house is simply a house of a middle class person whereas the ambani's house is the example of a super rich person's house so definitely we can tell the difference by looking at the construction of the houses in most of the cases here also those people who were not so rich their house constructions were very simple and the rich classes might have the splendid or the enormous magnificent right magnificent magnificent buildings so if we talk about the magnificent buildings then similarly the costly cloths were also there so some of the some of the people might be wearing the plain cloth some of the people might be wearing the woven cloth because we have obtained the evidences of the plain cloth fabrics okay fibers and in that statue of a bearded man we have obtained the presence of 
the presence of a robe which is having the, the great work, right? Great work of the handicraft or embroidery. Okay. So, embroidery and handicraft, etc., that indicates that probably that cloth piece was made for some rich or affluent person, whereas the simple fibers of the cloth they indicate that it might be related to uh, you know a normal middle class or lower class person because the cloths and the buildings and the ornaments jewelries etc right potteries etc all are the indicators of cultural prosperity as well as the economic prosperity a, a poor person does not use the gold and silver you know utensils whereas the rich person will not be using the will not be using or in, definitely will not be using the cheap earthen potteries earthen potteries okay so if we talk about uh, the house uh, sorry the the dress pattern so the men wore the robes of one's shoulder made of the wool and cotton and both men and women had long hairs and they were fond of jewelries like bangles necklaces earrings bracelets rings girdles anklets etc etc okay not just that, Harappan civilization also provides the use of the cosmetics, makeup products, right? Kohal, Kohal is Kajal and some other formal makeup products and also the presence of the mirror, the presence of a mirror made of, right, made of copper frame, okay, copper frame that is also clearly visible, that is also clearly visible. Okay, which indicates that probably they were they were quite aesthetic people. They were having the sense of beauty, sense of aesthetics, and they were also celebratory, right? Celebrative in the nature. Celebrative in the nature means what? That probably they enjoyed a lot of uh, you know fairs, lot of gatherings, lot of festivals, etc. How do we say that? And how can we say that? We can say that by looking at the different jewelries here. Nobody wears these type of, uh, you know, uh, you can say extravagant jewelries, these type of, uh, you know, appealing jewelries, particularly at simple occasions. These are definitely, these are definitely meant for some special occasions, probably a marriage, probably a ritual or maybe uh, some sort of, uh, you know, fair in the village, okay, something like that. So, here, you can see the different types of jewelries present here. These type of jewelries are quite similar, quite similar to the modern days jewelries. And these type of jewelries are similar to the tribal jewelries as today it has become, uh, you know, fashionable once again to wear these type of beads. Okay. So, these are basically the beaded jewelries. Okay. Beaded jewelries. All right. And these are made up of the right gold and uh, silver all right some of the other jewelries were also there which were made up of the semi precious stones okay semi precious stones primarily these semi precious stones included the stones like the stones like uh, jasper okay the stones like carnelian okay carnelian and the stones like gomed right and so many other types of stone lapis lazuli was also very important one okay so lapis lazuli was also there all right lapis lazuli got it everybody so different types of the stones different types of the metals not just gold and silver but also the copper Okay, copper, then terracotta. Okay, terracotta. Apart from that, bones. Okay, bones. All these were used to make to make the bangles. Okay, or the girdles. Okay, or the girdles, or the anklets, etc., etc. Okay, anklets, etc. So, different types of the materials were used, different types of the materials were used to construct or to make different types of jewelries. All right, everybody. So, I hope that all of you got a clear idea about it. Now, this is something you can see here, right? You can see here 
दिस इज द पिक्चर ऑफ अ साइन बोर्ड एंट्री गेट साइन बोर्ड विच वॉज probably used at the entry gate of dhola vira because this has been recovered from dhola vira and this indicates the bolden right embolden formats of the harappan scripts all right everybody not just that <coughs> the harappans were also having a diversified religious belief as well what is the meaning of this diversified religious belief so society that was quite ritualistic but non religious how can we say that ritualistic but non religious because the rituals are somewhere related to the somewhere related to the customary faith and belief but religion is an organized form it is an organized form of the set of belief customs rituals practices adhering them to a single ideology a set and determined ideology but we don't have any evidence we don't have any temples we don't have any such buildings where we can say that these people were gathering for the prayers or these people were worshiping their gods and goddesses okay we don't have any such common place however what do we have then we have the presence of we have the presence of the various okay various stone seals stone seals what is the meaning of the stone seals by the way basically the stone seals were made up of a specific type of stone called as a stettite stone okay called as the stettite stone and here if we see them so there was also the possibility of the shamanism or the animism what is the meaning of these two words shamanism or animism this means atmavad this means atmavad that probably they believed that there is the presence of a soul presence of a soul in anything okay why so because sometimes they also believed right they also believed that anything can be a living entity as they imagined the different types of different types of the composite animals as present on the representation of their seals sometimes they have you know they have combined together the face and the body of two different animals such type of seals are also present okay not just that they also have the tantric devices such as you know amulets or such as the uh, the bone cross is there okay the bone cross is there so this indicates this indicates that they probably believed in the you know the things like superstitious things like uh, nazar etc etc why so because the evil's eye that is also found in the harappan civilization so these practices of the indian society these beliefs and rituals and superstitions of the indian society they they are as old as harappan civilization okay so sometimes in upsc in fact there was a question related to the uh, you know continuity of the cultural aspects of harappan civilization in modern times and this question was probably asked in the mains examination you can see that what a level of cultural continuity we are still seeing in the current society now apart from that they also believe in the afterlife because the burials of the potteries have been found the burials have been found along with the dead bodies where the potteries were there and these potteries were having some edibles some uh, essential uh, you know essential products etc so that is where we can say that probably they thought that after death also the person will rise up and use these products isn't it now they also worshiped the right symbols or the nature of the right symbols or the members of the nature like trees animals etc and the cult of fertility what is the meaning of cult of fertility they actually respected the process of reproduction they actually could not understand the entire science of the genesis that how does it happen and who does this change who does this evolution right so that is where they were astonished and this is evident from this is evident from the worship of the mother goddess okay so such type of the sculptures of mother goddess made up of the terracotta it has been obtained from all the important sites including mohanjodaro harappa 
right including the place of rakhi gadhi as also from the mehargad from the mehargad probably one of the oldest okay in fact if you can look on this particular seal don't you think that this seal indicates that a lady most probably is sitting in the yogic posture doing some sort of a meditation and then the same person either lady or a man that is not very clear but the same person is holding a spear holding a spear okay this spear with the help of this spear this is probably a huge buffalo huge buffalo because you can see the you know head and also the horns all right and this huge buffalo is having some sort of having some sort of uh, you know huge body and this is being killed by this is being killed by this lady this lady all right everyone so here you can also see the presence of that animal an animal which appears like a crocodile or a giant a giant lizard okay this is the body and this is the snout of the crocodile okay snout 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 means the you know the forward the forward section of the you know protruding body part in a in any lizard or any alligator or any reptile okay so the conical part the front conical part of any reptile is called as snout is called as a snout okay now apart from that you can see the very famous the very famous right proto shiva seal here you can see the presence of four strong animals including a tiger okay including an elephant all right including including a buffalo and including a rhino okay and here these are the two antelopes two antelopes what is the meaning of antelopes antelopes means the deer the deer okay so the proto shiva the proto shiva seal is also called as pashupati also called as pashupati and who gave this name pashupati this name was given initially it was called by john marshall and later on it was uh, affirmed and supported by vincent or arthur smith okay so after that you can see that these are the different places you can see probably probably the presence of a, a stepped well right a stepped well or similar type of uh, similar type of right sacrificial okay sacrificial pyres sacrificial pyres means what the yagya kunds okay the yagya kund or sacrificial sacrificial pots that have that have been unearthed from the place of lothal similarly you can see this seal having a strange kind of animal which is having the neck of a deer the mouth of probably a cow or a deer then the body of a bull the body of a bull and the long long horn on the horn on its forehead so this is probably again a combination or an imagination of different uh, people in harappan civilization however the western scholars have called it as the unicorn unicorn means the animal with a single horn that is unicorn okay unicorn here you can see the zebu this is called as zebu zebu is basically the traditional indian bullock having a huge hump on the back of its body and also a huge and long shiny horn okay so this zebu is often regarded as often regarded as the worshipable figure so you can understand it very well that even the bull was worshiped even the bull was worshiped even pashupati was worshiped and not just the bull and the pashupati but also you can see the presence of this now how many of you will not agree how many of you will not agree that this is not a shivling i think everybody will agree those who so ever had the doubts regarding the presence of pashupati similar to shiva so look at this picture now nobody can deny that this was probably the presence of 
और शिवलिंग राइट बेसिकली फाउंड एट कालीबंगा फाउंड एट कालीबंगा और राइट एवरीबडी दिस इज क्वाइट एविडेंशियल क्वाइट एविडेंट सो नॉट जस्ट द प्रेजेंस ऑफ लिंगम राइट बट ऑल्सो द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द कल्ट ऑफ फर्टिलिटी इंडिकेट्स द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द शिवलिंगम इंडिकेट्स द पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ possibility of the worship of phallus okay worship of phallus and vulva phallus and vulva okay so probably these these were also connected with the theory of the cult of fertility okay apart from that you can also see this picture this picture has been recovered at uh, rakhi gadhi this 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 entire graveyard has been recovered at rakhi gadhi from where we have obtained the co burial this, but the co burial earlier it was thought that only lothal had some evidence of co burial but at present not just lothal but other places are also found having the co burial sites particularly at rakhi gadhi we have obtained the five different burials but this is a special right this is special why in this burial you can see probably the skeleton of a man and woman how do we know that a man and a woman because with respect to the uh, with, uh, with respect to the dimensions of the bone particularly this wider hip bone suggests wider hip bone suggests the presence of a female right not just that acha phallus and vulva phallus is basically the male genital organ and vulva is the outer genital organ of the female right so that is uh, actually present the evidences of the stone seals showing these two organs are found in harappan civilization all right everyone as far as the economy is concerned so harappans were having the agrarian economy with a flourishing trade and commerce it was primarily based upon the agriculture and also some of the precious products were traded with the other contemporary cultural civilizations like mesopotamia like uh, you know egyptian civilization etc etc even persia was also having the trade relations not just that this place of harappan civilization particularly mohenjodaro is mentioned as meluha in the mesopotamian text along with the dilman and and magan this is makan or sometimes also known as the magan okay magan okay the use of the seals as the guild symbol was possible as evident by the presence of the cylindrical seals of mesopotamia so once we have the presence of the mesopotamian seals in the harappan cities then we also find the presence of the harappan seals in mesopotamia the city of mesopotamia ur they have the harappan seals so the exchange of seals what does it mean either these seals might be somewhat related to related to the right related to the currency uses or might be possible that these seals are related to the symbolic currency or some sort of uh, some sort of prestige right some sort of prestigious symbol for example suppose if india is a trading with a country and uh, currently we don't have the money so what do we do we save our security bonds government security bonds or we save our gold reserves at the helm of that country okay so this is something very similar something very similar right apart from that you can also understand with the help of presence of this beads these beads were used in the manufacturing of the jewelries and these were manufactured at place called as a chand hudaro okay chand hudaro so they were manufactured at manufactured at at chan hudaro all right these things are okay these are the different types of the scales and the needles etc and these were all made up of the made up of the ivory okay ivory scales are there ivory scales are there now this is basically uh, probably a button a button shaped okay a button shaped calculus okay button shaped calculus is there okay here you can see the presence of dies okay the presence of dies so here you can see that these dies you know these dies 
okay these dice they are used in they are used in the game of ludo or the game of chaturang ancient indians called it as chaturang which means which means right the chess however this is uh, actually related to related to the you know the game of right the game of as we all call it the mahabharata dyut okay dyut we should not call it as gambling okay we should not call it as gambling because the dyut was a little bit different chopper dyut different names are used okay now apart from the other features we also call about the economy so economy was prevalent right prevalently uh, done with the barter system it was prevalently done with the barter system which means exchange of the goods and services with each other right so one good is exchanged with the other good suppose i am uh, selling you uh, suppose a product like that so you will be giving me something different some different product okay here beads manufacturing right, beads manufacturing factory was founded chanhudaro and lothal that was used for exports and lothal also had a very famous dockyard very famous dockyard in the yesterday's lecture also i had discussed about several sites where the port was present and you can see those sites as rangpur somnath sutka gandor balakot all these places were having having the sea ports here you can see uh, the unit of weight measurement so let me tell you that weights and measurements were they were made initially in the binary and later on in the decimal system and not just that not just that their decimal system actually started from 16 for example it was like 2 4 8 16 and then 160 3 20 like that okay and the smallest weight measurement unit that was the combination of eight gunja seeds gunja seeds are basically a type of small pulse like seed and here you can see the eight different gunja seeds were used as the smallest weight most probably they might be using they might be using it for uh, weighing the you know gold etc or some other costly costly thing all right okay everyone so as we can see this map this map indicates the locations of the you know different materials which were sent out or which were purchased from for the people of harappan civilization all right for the, for the people of harappan civilization so here you can see the statite was there statite was there so statite was actually statite was actually sent out it was actually sent out it was exported from harappa statite all right and if we talk about copper you can see the presence of copper so copper was imported from afghanistan region copper was imported from from khetri region from khetri region okay so copper was imported from khetri all right similarly if we see even kathiawar region also had the presence of the presence of right copper okay then different places right different places were having the semi precious stones like agate these areas were having agate okay these areas were having agate got it everybody similarly you can see here uh, the lapis lazuli so we can very well understand the presence of lapis lazuli so this place in afghanistan okay and here also this place in uh, central asia they had the lapis lazuli they had the lapis lazuli so overall this maps gives us a clear idea that different products which were often purchased from right and sold to different countries across the world in that region of the world particularly all right everyone so i hope that now this makes a sense to everybody now talking about the agriculture right, talking about the agriculture so agriculture was basically important for harappans because harappans were agrarian economy and at the same time this region was the first place to grow cotton in the entire world even greeks had also called cotton as a sindon that means related to sindh related to sindh major crops were wheat recovered from mehargarh barley recovered from banwali rice recovered from lothal right and also rice is also obtained from right from the lothal and 
from a pottery at Rakhi Gadi as well. Then the other crops included pulses, millets, oil seeds, etc. And the riverine and marine resources, they were both exploited. Why? What is the meaning of riverine? Means the resources like fish, like other seeds, some vegetation, etc. recovered from the riverside. And the seaside also facilitated the ship, uh, facilitated the use of the ship to, to catch the fish, etc. Right? Similarly, the bulls were revered. Bulls were respected, worshipped because they founded the found they founded the entire transportation industry on their back. They were carrying the goods and you know, various things from place to place. They were also helping the farmers in the cultivation of their lands. Right? They were also helping the farmer in you know completing the entire process and processing of the grains. So that's why the bulls were most useful animal for the farming community of the Harappan civilization. This is why probably they might be worshipped. They might be worshipped. Okay. Camels and asses were used for the long, long transportation purposes because their speed was comparatively better as well as the stamina was also good. At Kalibanga, right, at Kalibanga, we have obtained the examples of like that the plowed fields, the plowed fields where we can see the presence of the furry, the presence of the furrows, the presence of the furrows plowed by, right, furrows which are plowed for cultivation, cultivation. Those who do not understand the meaning of the furrows, we might be uh, able to understand the meaning of the carries, the meaning of carries, okay. Right, everyone? Similarly, we have also obtained, we have also obtained the images of terracotta plow from the Banwali and Bahawalpur. What is terracotta? It is a type of clay, it is a type of soil, the toys made up of the soil which are later on baked in the fire. Okay. So, this is the very famous bullock cart which is uh, found, right, which is found from uh, Mohanjadaro. Similarly, the bullock carts have been recovered from Harappa, from Rakhi Gadi, from various other places as well. All right, everybody. Then talking about the art, craft and script. So, Harappans were probably the most astonishing manufacturers of the crafts in their, in their time. No other civilization had got such vast variety of the crafts and particularly the metal crafts found at their place. If you see the dancing girl which is made up of the bronze, the priest king torso which is also remarkable. There are various seals and terracotta present which is the having the best level of the Indus art and the use of the various type of stones such as the stratite, agate, topaz, lapis lazuli, copper is also the metal that was used. All these things indicated what? That Harappans were fond of art and handicraft. Okay? They were also having the great knowledge related to the, related to the use of the metals. So, here we can also see that pictographic script that they were using, that was basically logosyllabic script. That means they were using the images even in their script also, right? Even in their script also. So, overall you can see these pictures. These all are the examples of the craft, the, you know, the statue of mother goddess, again different type of mother goddess. Then you, you are a statue of the couple of, the couple of uh, respected Right, respected gods. See, the names are unknown probably, but you can see that one is a male and another one is a female, right? Then these are the entire group of the different statues. This is the famous bearded person obtained from Mohanjodaro and this is the, the male torso obtained from Harappa made up of the red sandstone, made up of the statite. Okay, and these are made from the terracotta. This is made from bronze. These are made from terracotta. All right, everybody. So, these are the different details. Now, let us see the details about our upcoming courses as well because today is the last date on which you can register yourself for the upcoming July morning batches. Here, you will be provided the batches in the English, English and uh, Hindi medium with all the required details that would be provided to you and also it will be having a benchmark mains residential program that will involve the in-class training and guidance to all of you at the Study IQ campus. 
all these will be inclusive and present at rupees 29,999 but you just have to use this code ASR live if you want this price if you will not use this code you will get this course as rupees 70,000 all right everybody so that is all in today's session I hope that you all might be you all might be uh, definitely getting to understand a lot of things those who want the PDF of this session they can join my telegram channel here on this address and let's meet let's meet tomorrow with the new topic with the new uh, details about the lecture so tomorrow we will be doing about the you know various places and the evidences and other features recovered from those places related to the Harappan civilization so till then take care everybody thank you so much for watching it and if you liked this video do not forget to hit the like button at the same time you can also share this video with your friends as well who want to have an extensive and enriching learning about the Harappan civilization and other topics of ancient history. Thanks a lot everybody for watching it. Take care, bye-bye. Let's meet tomorrow and Jai Hind.